Corey, I've been working on this for two hours. Koda Vedvik. Oh wow, wow, yeah, that you got, yeah, that you, that's that's Koda Vedvik. Yeah, that's really, really good. I'm very impressed. <laughs> um, I'm always curious how it, how uh, it, what it was that made you. You know what? Just call me Corey. Corey's fine, even though that's not how you would pronounce it back home. Well, so when I first came to the States, I was a foreign exchange student uh, in Kansas, and uh, I remember I said my name, just how you just said it, Kora or Kora. It depends where you're from in Norway. And it's an R. It's spelled with an R, but when I got to repeat it back to me, it got replaced by an L, so it became like Kola. And I was like, that's not my name. Um, so yeah, so I said, Corey is probably easier for the English speaking time, and I just stuck with Corey. And phonetically, Corey also makes sense. Because my se the second letter in my name is a Norwegian letter O, and then the last letter E in English is E, so Corey. It kind of makes sense. So yeah. How did uh, how did you get to American football in Norway? Uh, so we had a in my city, Norway. You have a, we have clubs around in Norway spread out. In my city, they offered it through a team at the time called AFC Show. So me and my best friend were wanting to take a foreign exchanger in the U.S. and we said it would be fun to join a football team before we went over there. So we joined the AFC show back before I took my uh, foreign exchanger. Spent about four or five months, five, six months maybe with that team. Um, mostly just, you know, trying it out. And I wasn't kicking back then, though. I was just kind of running routes and trying to be a wide receiver. So, but it was fun. And sorry, just to follow up, how old were you and you, you didn't want to be John Arnarisa, you wanted to be like John Harbaugh. Exactly right. I mean, John Arnarisa, he has a powerful leg, so everybody in Norway wants to, to have his leg, you know, that left foot is, is strong. But uh, no, he's, he's a person everybody looks up to, and John Harbaugh, when I get, when I get to a chance to meet him, he's also a person that you, you aspire to be, be someone like him. If you need to be a little bit like him, then, then uh, you're on the right path. Thank you. Britain? Britain? Hey Corey, I'm just uh, kind of wondering about, about your story, your kind of journey, because like you, you, you kind of jumped around a lot of NFL teams. What was that kind of like to go through that whole process? Yeah, it's been uh, eight teams now, uh, and this will be the fourth year after college. And uh, you know, it's uh, it's been a journey. You got to figure out what it is you want to do, and uh, and then and then you just got to make a decision. And my decision is this is something I like to do, and I love doing it. I love the training. I love the being a part of a team. You know, meeting new people and um, and being in this being in this uh, type of environment. And and for me, it's fine. So I mean, it's been. Uh, uh, I choose to look on the the more brighter sides of, you know, being on eight teams rather than the, the opposite and uh, just kind of see what type of experience I get to take from those places, how that can form me into a better athlete, what I can take from each team and, you know, I move on. And, and it's all part of the journey, you know, like I never thought that I was going to be in the States and then I never thought I was going to be in the NFL and I never thought I was going to be in Canada. And all of a sudden I'm in Canada. And, you know, for me, it's like I always look forward to it. For me, that's this is another highlight of my of my journey, the chance that I get to come to Canada, live here, in the new in a new country so yeah this will be my third country now that i live in and then yeah it's pretty cool and so what kind of brought you to saskatchewan i guess what what, what was the process that led you getting here how long will they reach out to you have these been kind of ongoing so i was uh drafted in the global draft back in may uh so i spent last last season i spent in washington on practice squad and um and then i was released and um and i was drafted in the global draft by canada uh, Saskatchewan Rough Riders, and um, at that point, I kind of wanted to see if I still had some shots uh, in the NFL. Um, suspected I still was going to get some workouts, which I did. Uh, I got a workout by the 49ers. I got a workout with the Jacksonville Jaguars, who I got signed by, uh, and then that didn't last very long. I was there for six days, um, you know, roster moves, and um, and then I had a workout with the Giants. And after that, I was just I just want to play, you know. And um, the Rough Riders, they they kind of it kind of seemed like a place that they wanted me to come up here and play. So that's to me it was I called my agent. I was like, you know, what, I think I'm ready. Let's uh, let's go to Canada and I'm gonna play some football. Taylor. Taylor. Hey Corey, what does it mean to you to be able to play this week already? Just a few weeks after coming to Saskatchewan. Excuse me, can you repeat that? What does it mean to you to be able to get into the lineup this week? Uh, assuming you're gonna have other punching duties. Oh yeah, well, I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of surreal. Um, I wasn't really expecting it. John Ryan's a phenomenal punter, phenomenal guy, phenomenal teammate. I mean, you know, 
Um, unfortunately, uh, what happened last game, now I'm in a position to go in there, step in, and uh, you know I'm going to do my best, and, and I'm excited. I get to go line up and, uh, and, uh, and help the team, you know, and by doing my job as good as I can do it. Are there differences in your job? North of the border in Canada versus uh, American football. Yeah, well, in Canada you have a little, little more variety to the kicking game. Uh, you have a lot of different style of kicks that can be used in the game, that are you know depending on the situation you're in. Um, but you're still just kicking the ball. So um, for me, punting the ball is punting the ball, whether it's higher or lower. It's it's still punting the ball. Same with kicking kick, field goals. You're still kicking the three uprights. So not that much different. Mike. Mike. Hi, Corey. Uh, I've seen you and Ben hanging around after practice and working out together. Uh, Craig Dixon mentioned it's a bit of a competition. Are you guys kind of putting that aside, or are you, trying, are you just trying to push each other to see who's going to be, to be better? Well, I mean, the way I view it is that, you know, we're, you're always competing in, in football, whatever, wherever you go. You're always competing as somebody, whether they're in the building or not. But, I mean, the main focus comes down to you taking care of yourself and you taking care of the things you need to improve on. and. And if you can have a camaraderie and help each other out, then you're winning, you know. So for me, we're not focusing on, you know, each other as a as a as a as a competition. You're competing more against yourself than anything. So, so yeah. So we're you know we're we're good friends already. We're he's from Australia, I'm from Norway, and you know we spend some time outside afterwards. You know, Australians they're they're uh, they're uh, notoriously known for being good punters. So he knows a little trick or two, and you know, I'll show him some things that I've been working on. And you know, we'll just share stuff and banter around and have fun. Like, I just have you been told you're going to be the starting punter? Or is there still the competition going on? Um. Well, I took reps today uh, in practice, so it's a day-to-day -day thing. And um, so yeah, I took today's reps and uh, went good. And uh, uh, we'll see what coach says tomorrow. Thank you. Derek? Derek? Uh, Corey, when the Riders took you in the draft, uh, someone DM'd me, someone who would know DM me and said, he has the strongest leg in the world. Uh, <laughs> your reaction to that, sir? That's funny, and I appreciate that. That's a, that's a compliment. Uh, I've, seen some, I've seen some strong legs in, in my career, so uh, no. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> but that's cool. That's cool. Uh, in, in the three in the three kicking games, how would you evaluate yourself in each of them? Oh, I look at so so my I remember I had this question. So I've had I've had this question. I mean, I think at every step of my career, um, when I got to college, I was mainly a field goal kicker, and you know, with a soccer background, I played soccer my entire life. Then uh, kicking field goals was always the the most natural to me. Um, and that's how I got to Marshall. That is how I went, when I went to kicking camps, I competed more in doing field goals and I usually did better at field goals. To get a starting job at Marshall when I was there, I had to learn how to punt. And uh, there was no option to kick. We had a team was saturated with kickers. We had three kickers and I was like, you know what, I, I just want to play. So I took that challenge and I spent a year just learning how to punt. So for me, there was a lot of, there was a lot of pride that went into uh, uh, taking that responsibility and saying I'm going to master this craft of punting and, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to become a punter. So in a way to me with a soccer background, the way I explained it was that I didn't really see that much of a difference when it came to the kicking part. When it comes to punting, you you got to use your hands and you need to catch and set that ball consistently and it's about to drop. So that is the main thing you need to learn for punting. Once that ball is set and that's out there, you're still just a kicker. You're kicking the crap out of that ball wherever you want to put it, you know. And that's how I view it. I said it's like I you say it's like soccer. You just have a different style of kicks, you know. And um, yeah, so I mean, people can argue differently, but I don't. Know. I, I look at it as uh, it's. I love both. I think I'm. I think I'm just as good at both. And uh, no, yeah, that's that's how I view it. Excellent. Thank you. Luke. Luke. Uh, I was just wondering what you've learned from uh, John Ryan since you joined the Rough Riders. Um, yeah, it's tough. Been been around for a week and a half. What have I learned so far? <laughs> um, he's uh, he's obviously a team leader. the The team respects him as a you know with a as a as a figure. I mean, I know John Ryan from what he's done his career. He's a guy that I've studied. You know. 
And um, and I know what he's about. He's spent 11 years with the Seahawks. He's a Pro Bowl. I mean, he's a Super Super Bowl winner. I mean, the guy is legit. I used to watch films of John Ryan when I was in uh, college uh, when he was uh, uh, with a guy called um, Gary Zahner. And I just used to watch how John Ryan used to hit these bombs. I mean, like five, four hang time punts. And you used to wonder how the heck can you hit those punts? Um, so, you know, this is, a, this is a guy who's just immensely talented, who's proven himself as an NFL veteran, and now he's here, you know, and, and contributing to, to taking this, to this team to the season that we're having. And, um, and uh, you know, everybody on the team, they, they respect him. He's a, he's, a, he's a leader on the team, and, um, and that's, that's what I look at. I look at him as that person. Thank you. Okay. Part of your journey is the incident you went, you suffered in, in Baltimore uh, for the season. How much did that change your perspective, um, not only then, but as you continue to grow up and, and progress? Yeah, I mean, that was, uh, that was tough. You're a, you know, you're a foreigner in a different country. Things are different. Society is different. Um, you know, in Norway, we like to say we... <laughs> Like I said, we're the most peaceful country in the world. We're the best country in the world. And, you know, that's how it is in Norway. And we truly believe that. Um, so I think some realities, you know, back then hit me, hit me. That's kind of real world that hit me. I was like, oh, wow, this is, you know, this is tough. So those are, those are, those are hard to deal with. But uh, I'm very fortunate that I, that I have, uh, you know, I have family, my host family that I live with. Uh, when I took my foreign exchanger, they're now basically my family. So I'm, I'm lucky to say that I have a family here in the U.S., uh, in the U.S. when I was there, and uh, had a great support system around me. You know, my my host dad Scott, he came up to Baltimore and he lived with me for the next two to three months while we were just going. Because I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, I, there was the incident, but I wasn't really injured. Um, I had some facial uh, injuries and stuff, but nothing, nothing uh, serious. Um, so you know, he was just up there and we're just kind of talking through things and getting back and feet, like saying, how does this fit into the how does this, what ha just happened, kind of fit into the journey, right? And how do you now approach it? So that was a challenge. And that, that, I mean, that was ongoing. I mean, you know, a month later, you're like, oh, wow, well, you, you thought you figured it out. But I guess, you know, that was a little tougher to deal with than you thought. And, but, uh, but yeah, that was, uh, that was another, uh, that was a tough, that was a tough incident to get through. But I mean, uh, thanks to my family, friends, and everybody around me, I mean, I've been able to get through it and I'm here, so. Because uh, it kind of hurt your chances, though potentially cracking that Ravens team, I imagine, as well. So, um, yeah, well, at the Ravens, I wasn't really there to take over for Justin or Sam's job. Um, I was there as a preseason specialist. So Baltimore has takes pride in being the best, single -handed, like as a team, they're the best team when it comes to specialists. Um, they have the system there. They have John Harbaugh. They have Randy Brown. At the time, they had Jerry... Uh, Rosberg uh, and Chris Horton, so they're all they're all into the idea of let's have you know whatever we're doing at Baltimore, let's keep this going. And uh, every year they want to bring in a guy who could uh, who could take over during the preseason games for Justin and Sam. And as a combo guy, a guy who can do both, that that fits the bill because now they can take Sam and Justin out of the games and let rest their legs and let me play. So um, so it's more of a. a it's more like how do you say I call it like the best kicking camp you can go to, because uh, you have the best coaches, you have you have the best punter, you have the best kicker, you have the best you know kicking, you have one of the best kicking coaches there. Um, so yeah, so that helped me develop tremendously, and then and not just like as I was playing, but knowledge wise about certain details of being a kicker and a punter, like what they focus on over there that makes them so elite. Um, but yeah, so after the incident happened. Um, Ravens kept me on, uh, uh, on um, forget the classification, but it was injury reserve. Uh, not injury reserve, but it was an injury designation list and um, to bring me back for the next preseason. So they say, you know, uh, there was trade interest at the time for you, so I want to bring you back again. And then I came back next year and I had a good preseason game. So I ended up getting traded. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. Corey, you said you with the incident you thought you'd figured it out, but it was tougher to deal with than you thought. What do you mean by that last part? Well, it was, it was to deal with than you thought. Um, it's more just because the way I am, like uh, people don't know me, and that's that's I guess when I when I talk to my family, I said it was tougher, you know. Well, they didn't know me, so 
Um, my attitude is my entire life always been just no matter what happens, keep a positive outlook, you know, like I'm always just going to, oh, that happened. That's fine. I'm, I'm going to be able to get through it. And, you know, just at that moment, I think it was a little it was a little uh, deeper than that. And when I woke up at the hospital, I literally remember saying I was like, oh, well, I'm alive. I'm fine. So I just said I was fine. I didn't even take a chance to kind of process what happened and, and kind of talk it out. I was like, oh, no, I'm good. I'm, you know, I'm healthy. I'm, I can kick tomorrow. I'm good. And then just kind of let reality sink in a little bit. It was like, okay, it's a little bit serious. And just kind of acknowledging what happened, talking it through the proper way and actually going through uh, um, kind of what happened, you know. So just saying that. It happened, but it doesn't matter because it didn't matter, you know, because the reality is that it did happen and you need to talk about it. So, so it's just more like deciding to talk about it, I guess. Okay. I, I really like that. Yeah. Um, were you and Chris, Chris and Zala, were you guys were in were Baltimore at the same time? Yes. Me, Chris and uh, Alvin Jones, all three of us. Okay. Do you, uh, did you get to know Chris well, like when you saw him here, when you arrived? You go, oh, hey. Oh yeah, yeah, Chris, Chris, uh, yeah, Chris, one of my better friends. So, um, so I mean, we've stayed in touch since Baltimore. You know, I think I don't think there's been a single week where me and him don't talk. So we we stay in touch. We're good friends. A guy from Germany and a guy from Norway meet in Saskatchewan. Exactly, and uh, and he's and he's also he's fully Nigerian, and I'm I'm half Nigerian. So you know, we have uh, we have some bonds, uh, share some mutual bonds right there. <laughs>